Hello everyone, let's look at this problem here. We are trying to just find a derivative for this curve. And this curve, we are going to make an assumption here. We are going to assume that y is defined implicitly as a differentiable function of x. Okay, so let's get started for this problem. Um, so first, we are going to differentiate the left-hand side. And when we differentiate this left-hand side right here, we are going to use the general power rule and at, um, as well as the chain rule at the same time, right? So because there are inner functions inside this outer function of square. So let's do that. So first, we are going to take the, um, the derivative of the outer function, which is just a, a quantity of function square, and we got to use the power rule. So we are going to bring down the square to the front. So when we do that, then we are going to get, we are going to get what? We are going to get two and then x plus y. Okay, so we do not touch the inner function because we are applying the chain rule right now. So we do not touch this inner function right here. And then see what's going on here is that we are going to take one away from this two, so it becomes a one. And then now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And so what is the derivative of the inner function? It's going to be this. So um, the derivative of x is just one, right? So we're going to put the one here. Uh, but just one thing to remember is that we because we have multiple turns as an inner function. So when we take the derivative of the inner function, we actually need to put parentheses right here. So we cannot simply just put a dot here and then stop putting down the answer. We actually need to put um, open parentheses right here just to surround that, that derivative of the inner function. Okay, so we get a one here and plus, right? And then what about the y? The y is going to be, um, we are also going to just apply the uh, power rule for the y, so it becomes just a 1 in this case. But we also need to remember that y is defined implicitly as a function of x, right? So assuming that it's differentiable, then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the y with respect to x, which will give us the dy dx. Okay, so we are going to get 1 from the y, right? And then times. Okay, so we're going to multiply by the dy dx. Okay, so we have the dy dx over here. And then that's the derivative of the inner function. Okay, let's continue with the problem. So we are going to differentiate the right-hand side right now. For the right-hand side, we will be using a product rule and also the chain rule for this. See a product here, and also there is a y here, and we need to differentiate the y with respect to x, so we also need to apply the chain rule. Okay, so let's do this one. When we differentiate um, this function, a product, using the product rule, we are going to differentiate just the first function, and then we do not touch the second function. And so it's a good idea to actually just highlight the function first. So we are going to say that the y is the first function, and then the other function is the... The other function is e to the x. Okay, so those are the two functions here. So I'm going to first dif uh, differentiate the y, which will actually just give me 1 times, what is that? That's dy dx, okay? And then what about the second function? The second function, I'm not going to do anything to it, so I'm just going to copy to this function. Yeah, so... Do not differentiate the second function here, right? That's what the product rule is telling us. Okay, now continue with the, the second term of the product rule. Then we are going to um, just write down the first function. So the first function is untouched. I just copy it down here, just copy down the y, right? And then now what about the second function? The second function I'm going to differentiate. And when I differentiate e to the x, I'm going to get e to the x. It doesn't seem like there's, we did anything, but actually I did. I took the derivative and it turns out that it's the same function. So I didn't change anything here. I just write on e to the x. Okay. So now uh, we get an equation that of course will look more complicated than the original equation because they are not even the same curve, right? This is actually the derivative of this. 
And what we need to do is that we need to find dy dx. So we are going to solve this equation for dy dx. So the rest is really just algebra work. And let me just highlight all the terms or actually highlight all the dy dx because we need to make sure that we know where they are, right? So one of them is actually this one right here. And then the other one is actually just this dy dx here. So we are going to try to get both on one side of the equation. But before that, it feels like there are a lot of things that we need to do first. As you can see here, there is a product two times x plus y, and then also times one plus dy dx. And so we got to distribute first before we would, um, would be able to isolate this dy dx. So let's do that. Okay, so this is just algebra work. I believe that it's a good idea to just clean up the expression before we continue. And so we are going to get two times x plus y, and then times one plus dy dx. Oh, actually, I should really just highlight this dy dx so that I won't lose track of where it is as I'm doing more calculation. And then what about this side? This side also has a dy dx in it. So I'm just going to get the dy dx. And then there was a e to the x, right? And then plus y times e to the x. Okay, so I'm going to distribute this side and eventually I will distribute it too. So I'm just going to FOIL this, um, the product of those two binomials. So I'm going to get two times, okay, so we have X times one. So we are going to get X plus now the X times the dy dx. So we get X times the dy dx. And continue we have the y times the one so we get the y here and then we have also the y times the dy dx right so we are going to get plus y times the dy dx oh it feels like i actually have more stuff on this side so i actually should move it a little bit so that i can line up all my equal signs even though it doesn't really matter but i just want to make it look better. Okay. So what about this side? This side, I didn't do, I don't have to do anything. So I can just leave it. All right. So I just copy. This copying can be quick. Okay. Now, um, next step, I'm, I can distribute the two. So I'm going to get two X plus two X and then dy dx. Okay, so as you can see here, the algebra work is more tedious than the calculus step. The calculus step was basically done in the first step. And yeah, again, we are, I want to move a little bit so that I can line up my equal sign. Yeah, so... Especially when I'm changing color, then it actually required me to do um, views even more work. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to start moving the turns around. So let me scroll down a little bit so that I have more space. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to move this turn to this side. So in other words, I'm actually going to just get all the turns with the dy dx to one side and then all the turns without the dy dx to the other side. So keep I'm going to keep this turn on this side here. So I'm just going to get 2x times dy dx. Okay. And then I'm going to keep the other turn. The other turn is actually this dy, uh, 2y times dy dx. So let's do that here. 2y times the dy dx. And then now I need to subtract this term from both sides so that I can also get this dy dx to the left side of the equation. So let's do that. If I do that, then I'm going to get the dy dx and then e to the x. Okay. Now the equal sign. And then, yeah, so this term is being 
subtract it so that now it will appear on this side. What about the right hand side here? The right hand side, I didn't do anything to this turn, so I'm just going to write it down. So we have y times e to the x. Okay, now there are two turns that we're gonna move from the left side to the right side, which are the 2x and then the 2y. So when I move them, then I'm going to get a minus 2x. See that the sign will be changed, right? Because I'm subtracting. I'm also subtracting the 2y from both sides, so I'm just going to get like the 2y here. Is that good? And then the next step is really just to factor out the dy dx and then two more steps, then we can actually isolate the dy dx and then that will be our final answer. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I'm gonna factor. So if I factor, then I'm just going to get uh, dy dx, okay. And then the rest of the stuff, which is actually the 2x plus the 2y and then minus the e to the x. Okay, so as you can see here, I think the equal signs are moving slightly. Let me move a little bit more, right? So. Yeah, so as you can see here, um, I factor the dy dx, and then I'm going to get the 2x here, the 2y here, and then the e to the x here with a minus sign. Okay, now what about this side? This side, just, just copy. You're not going to do anything here. Okay, lastly, we are going to divide both sides by this factor here, assuming that is non-zero then we are going to get the, an expression for the dy dx. So dy dx is equal to, now when we divide both sides, when we divide this from both sides, then we are going to get that in the denominator. So whatever that we have originally on the right-hand side will be the numerator. So it looks like y times e to the x, minus 2x minus 2y and then all over the 2x plus the 2y minus e to the x and so that's it that's our final answer right here okay so if i scroll back up then you can see that that's the whole process and as you can see here as i i said when i was doing the problem this is the calculus step right here it's only one step and then the rest is really just tedious algebra work. Yeah. Okay, so I will do more problems next time. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and give me some support. Thank you. And yeah, so thank you for watching this video. We'll see you next time.